no one will ever love me. How are you, my internet family, and welcome back for another video. And today I'm back with my lovely friend, Mrs. Hannah Witten. Hello. Basically, we became friends at the height of our singledom. Mm. The height, the peak. Mm. And we're now both in very happy and healthy relationships. Long term. Long term. Hannah's visiting me in Ireland, so that's why we're in my bedroom, which is really weird. We've I'm never. It's scary. Most of our videos so far have been about sex and relationships, I think. And, you know, we're going to stick down the relationship avenue with this. And we're going to essentially discuss our experiences being single versus our experiences in relationships. What was I going to say? Did uh, we get in our relationships around the same time? You were like six months ahead of us, I think. Ooh! Yeah. So you were single for five years, right? Like five, six years, yeah. And I was single for two years. And we would never have become friends, I don't think, if we weren't single at the same time. And I only say that because, like, we met at a convention and we were kind of in this single circle of people who were all... Well, I can tell you exactly how we became good friends. Okay. Without naming any names. But I had a thing with a guy many years ago. And that ended... And it was all fine. And then Melanie started dating him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We had... And then that went tits up. Yeah. And then Buried. you <laughs> started messaging me about him. Because you knew that I'd yeah. been there, but it was, like, fine. Yeah, yeah. And so you started messaging me being like, Because I want I'm to feel... Do... I'm, I'm feeling, feeling like feels. this. <laughs> I'm feeling this. And, like, I don't have anyone to talk to. And I was like... It, I remember it just being, like, essays and essays. Yeah. Like, big block texts. And that was how we became friends. And then... We'd already met each other, so we'd like had met in person, I think, mm. and then that happened, and then we became like little Facebook messenger pen yeah. pals. Yeah, so we kind of, we bonded through the being of the single, <laughs> yeah. and I, that's one thing I really disliked about this singleness is grey areas with people, like if I'd start having feelings, and then there's no label on it, and then, like, that seems to be a really common thing I get messaged about, like, mm. people are like, I'm crazy about this person, and I don't know if, like, what we are, like, are we together, are we not? Uh, um, I used to hate that, but I think I thrived on it as well. Did you? <laughs> I, oh, yeah, I don't know, oh. like, in, when you're in it, it's like really confusing, but also really exciting. It is and really like, exciting. And then yeah. when I look back on those times, I'm just like, I'm I'm glad that there was never like anything put on it, and it just like was what it was, and mm. then it like fizzled or or whatever it is. Yeah. So like I remember so much of our early friendship. I was kind of thinking I might be polyamorous and I was yeah. dating loads of people. I was basically open dating, like in lots of open relationships where if I was seeing one person or this person or that person, yeah. they were aware that I was seeing other people and Which they were okay with really it. Which is really good. Yeah. Because I think because you thought you were poly, it did mean that you kind of like came out as poly to people that you were dating, yeah, yeah, which yeah. meant that at least there was like that good communication there of like mm. the people you were dating, like knew where they stood with you and yeah. there was like everyone was on the same page and you had this like the expectations were managed polyamorous is like kind of almost like a sexual orientation where it's just like you just have the capacity yeah. to love more than one person at a time where it's like open relationships open dating is like a behavior it's like a lifestyle it's choice. a choice yeah 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 but for some people polyamory is like it's not a choice that's just like the way that they yeah. are and i realized i was not polyamorous through this open dating so i think it was a really important time for me and i learned so many things about what i wanted we are two people who really enjoyed for the most part being single yeah we're gonna go into like some of the the cons and stuff like that but i think we were having a wild time we were making the most of ups being single. Ups and downs. Yeah. <laughs> but the ups were so good because of the, thing, yeah. the industry we're in as well. Like we'd get to go on a lot of trips together and me and Hannah Needles were just- new people. Yeah, we were always like on the lookout, on the hunt, like all the time. And it was so fun. And I think being single is just such a great time for bonding with friends. We used to have these things called sexual liberation parties. And now three out of four of us are in long-term relationships. relationships. Yeah. What was your- Favourite thing, least favourite thing about being single? I think favourite thing was just being able to meet new people, not... <laughs> sounds kind of... I don't... It shouldn't sound selfish because it doesn't it doesn't feel like that in my head, but it's like... Not having to care about people. <laughs> yeah, not having to think about what another person would think or feel if I did something. Mm. Like, the only person who I have to answer to is myself. Yeah, like, if you want to be like, I'm moving to New York, you have to factor in someone but, else's but job. But not even or... that. It's like, oh, I'm at a party, or I'm 
at a bar or whatever, oh, and there's a person there that I'm chatting to and I'm like, I'm getting on really well with them and then this happens and then I decide to like go to this other place with them and then like I'm not having to be like, oh, but I shouldn't because X, Y, Z. Like, it's just like, oh, I want to do this. I'm going to do do it. it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. What's your least favorite thing? The least favorite thing was... I think just the inconsistency. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's quite draining, a lot of the ups and downs. Like, I don't think I was ever actively seeking to have a long-term partner. So a lot of my dating was just like, it just kind of happened. It is what it is. I wasn't like, I wasn't like constantly on apps being like, I'm trying to find someone to settle down with. Yeah. Um, You used to always talk about that, the whole, the one thing. You were like, you can have lots of ones. Lots of ones. (laughs) What I loved about being single was the sense of independence Mm. it gave me. I was in a six year long relationship before I was single and I felt very reliant on that other person for a lot of things. Um, Emotional support probably being the main one and kind of just just having someone there like cuddling and just talking to them at the end of the day and just always having like someone like the main person there and then when I was single I kind of realized I could rely on myself for a lot of the things I was mm-hmm. seeking in, for in someone else and I realized like I don't want to just have a person I want to have the right person and that was something that because I think I was a bit of a serial monogamist before I was single um, and I really felt very kind of in control of my life and very, I just felt great. Like just, especially the whole, you know, I'd, I'd sleep with someone or whatever and then just get up the next day and be like, right, I have to go and do these things, bye. And yeah. I, I just, I <laughs> loved that. And then I think my yeah. least favorite thing was like, I would I would definitely get very lonely. Mm. Um, and not all the time, it was just sometimes. Um, there would be these moments of like, if you were dating someone uh, or just or just like infatuated with someone, like had a really big crush on someone, mm. and then for whatever reason, they didn't like you back or it didn't work out, yeah. whatever, whatever happened, you would have these like moments, it might last like a week or two, yeah, where yeah, you're yeah. like, no one will ever <laughs> love me. <laughs> like, what is wrong with me? And then like- I'm an undateable. <laughs> yeah, I'm completely undateable. Like no one's ever gonna wanna settle down with me, I'm gonna die alone. And then you're just like, be fine the mm. next week you'll be like oh, okay cool <laughs> <laughs> I yeah I had that with someone I dated for like a couple of months and um it, it just like we had the whole like that's what's so weird when you're single though you're in a situation with someone and you do have to break up you have yeah. to have like a breakup talk even though you're not really officially together right? it's so strange and that didn't used to be a thing in dating that's a very modern problem but, it, but it's, yeah that's the thing because like, people don't right. necessarily always communicate from the outset what it is they want and what their expectations are yeah a lot of people don't be truthful about it I definitely wasn't like I think yeah. I was always wanting to believe that I was like oh well I just wanted to be whatever you wanted to be yeah. when actually no like in my heart I was like kind of it was like a head versus heart situation yeah they were clashing I like broke up with someone who I was dating once and I like almost didn't do it because I was so nervous about having the conversation like mm. you're like oh like you try to call them up and just to tell them that you don't want to see them anymore it's so weird it is, yeah. there was this guy who oh my god I think he's so attractive like he's so fit <laughs> which um, one is it I won't I won't include it he is stunning um and we started, we met and we started dating. Like we were just kind of like immediately attracted to each other and we kind of like had a good time on dates, but it became very clear from the beginning. Like he basically said he never wants to have kids for good reasons. Mm. And and so I was like, cool, I do. We can enjoy this time together. But like, obviously this isn't gonna, gonna go, go anywhere. anywhere. While I was single, I actually went through this weird phase of feeling kind of anti-marriage and like anti-having kids and all these things that I had wanted my whole life. Um, I think because I was in such a long thing and it didn't work out and you know my parents broke up and I've just I I kept seeing like all these relationships crumbling and I was just Mm. kind of like maybe we're not meant to you know just try and put all this onto one person and I had a lot we're not we're not yeah even that's the thing I've learned so much about relationships there are many things that my partner is does not provide for me yeah can't because that's not who they are but I still Mm. love him exactly and I can just go elsewhere but Um, but like go elsewhere I mean like we friends communicate and... about these things and yeah like it might be friends it might be family that's a smooth transition into the relationships thing because mm. like through being single i actually realized that 
your partner doesn't have you making a weird face there. I was trying to move my eyebrows, but I have no control over my face. <laughs> I just realised your partner's not supposed to be like, you're a therapist and you're this and you're that. Oh, and like, yeah. you know, the, for me, I prioritise like the main things that I want with a partner is like really great humour, feeling myself around them, great sexy times. Great. Um, and like, you know, feeling a, a sense of like like being a team mm. kind of thing but then the teamwork is a big one for me. yeah but there's like he like my partner is very very chilled out he just doesn't get his knickers in a twist about things like politics or anything like that so a lot of like the more intellectual conversations like that go deep about the universe and all like i will have them with like friends and stuff like that mm. you know what i mean like see i would go to Dan for, for that the stuff. intellectual like because he is a philosopher like he yeah. loves his philosophy and like sometimes actually that's the thing I can't provide for him mm. like he'll want to go deep into some philosophical stuff and I'm just like I don't really care yeah. what the meaning of life is ah, just that's, get on with things. but that's me I'm the Dan <laughs> I'm the Dan in the relationship <laughs> but like politics and like um like feminism and stuff like there are some areas where we are both like mega interested in, and can like discuss these things together mm-hmm. and then other times I'm just like no I'll talk to someone else about it yeah <laughs> and so. I think it's like a case of when you put too much pressure and weight onto this like one person it's bound to collapse it's just bound to collapse because there is no such thing as this like absolute perfect human being who yeah. just is takes everything and why would you want that anyway Dan won't go to the theatre with me so I have to find other theatre buddies that, actually what would my similar one to that be because there's certain levels of compromise that we do like I yeah. started actually going to the gym with him a lot because that's a massive thing for him and I realised I really enjoyed it as well and it kind of helps me with my mental health and stuff like that and I kind of wanted to be part of that part of his world mm. but then yeah like I'm so into films and cinema and he's just he'll watch them but then afterwards like I just want to talk about it for yes. three hours, and oh he God. just he's just like it was good or that was shit. That's Dan. <laughs> That's Dan as well. Like I have to find other people to talk about books, films, theatre, and like that stuff with because mm. yeah, Dan's just like it was this, and then like has he has just no desire to go into it. Mm. But there are other we can just be that for each other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, favorite thing and least favorite thing about being in a relationship right now Ooh. in your specific relationship in my specific relationship I think my favourite thing is like us building our life and home together like because we live together um, and I love um, like the teamwork and the managing the home together and the little like routines that we get into yeah. of like um, who cooks who cleans and like little I don't know little rituals and we're now like mum and dads of a little leopard gecko Aww. so yeah there's just like the the sharing of the life nesting nesting and, the, yeah. and the, the i guess the household management and then least favorite thing about being in a relationship i don't know i think maybe it's kind of like the counterpoint to like my favorite thing about being single i am someone who constantly is just like i want to go do this i want to go do that and i experience this thing over there and like that thing looks shiny ah! <laughs> um, like that is me yeah um and being in a relationship means i have to be like um dan like can i go do this this weekend because because we like manage our time and, around each other uh, yeah. yeah and so there might be like oh no we've not been to see his mum in a while so we need to like um carve out yeah. that weekend to go see her um we've not seen my parents in a while okay we need to like put that in um so there's just stuff that you just have to cons- you have to you consider have to the consider other person them. and like it's not even a negative thing like it's not like oh my god I have to consider Dan it's not yeah it, like oh no he's he does- in the way oh, he doesn't <laughs> let me do these things it's not like that at, at all, all. Yeah. it is just more you have there is an extra step yeah. between because before it would be like I want to do this thing right go I'm doing do this it. thing and now mm. it's like I want to do this thing just check in with Dan okay now we go yeah, do this thing <laughs> it is and cuz living your life with someone else like adapting to each other's lives is can be so complicated to get into that routine at the start and get mm-hmm. into the habits of like kind of um because you're on different schedules yeah. sometimes and all that kind of thing one of the things that me and dan had to do um because i'm constantly like bah, 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 over here over here like this social activity this work event and dan works like in the day like normal nine to five mm. um and so we had to make a compromise where dan was just like at least one evening a week you are home yeah and we spend it together oh that's because nice. i was just like constantly out like sometimes we'd be out together 
or, or other times I would just be out, but Dan was just like, one night a week, you and me are both in together. Yeah, and I was so just like, important. Roger. The compromise <laughs> thing, I, I feel like it is definitely one of the kind of downsides, like I wouldn't say downside, but my partner's job means that he is like, it's all over the place because he's he flies airplanes so sometimes he's needed in the morning sometimes he's needed in the evening and then i have if he's flying in the morning we both have to go to bed at like seven or eight o'clock in the evening Ooh, yeah. if i want to be able to see him at all because then i wake up with him and i'm on yeah. his schedule so he does make a lot of compromises around me as well um but yeah like i think my favorite thing would kind of overlap with what you said mine would be just the intimacy you get with one person mm. because that was what I found when I dated multiple people at the same time I could really like them and you know have great times with them and stuff but there was just you can't I can't cross a certain threshold if I know that there's like other people that they're kind of involved with and they're they're trying to juggle me with all these other people whereas like when it's just me and this person being like we're doing life together like we're making the choice to work on this relationship and and to to show up and and all that it the, the intimacy you get is is beyond like mm -hmm. um and I don't just mean like you know peeing with the door open I mean just it's it's hard to describe unless I think you've experienced that level of intimacy but it's it fills my life so much like it does it makes me really really happy and I think um yeah it's just, I, I just love it and that's just pure me being I did a quiz actually Shan Booty had this quiz and I got monogamish because like um that might be sexually, like sexually I, I would find other people very attractive yeah. and stuff and Thomas knows that like I always say that I think that it was him. Dan Savage that coined the term monogamish and oh, I yeah. think it means different things to different Couples, couples but it can include things like you're monogamous but you might have threesomes or you might swing or you might you might just um, even just like i think like letting each other watch porn or like yeah, talking about other people it totally or, depends um, on like how role you playing it. about other people and yeah because like, everyone has different like um definitions for not for monogamy as well like mm. some people are like you're not allowed to masturbate or watch porn which yeah. i'm like red flag yeah um and but some people just think that that's not a thing that you should be allowed to do in a relationship. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got issues. When you and Thomas aren't spending time together, like how much do you text? Oh, a lot. Yeah, like we, if if I'm away on a work trip, it'll be like paragraphs and we'll call each other and we'll send each other videos. Oh, like we see, Dan and I are just terrible at like, online communication. communication when I'm away or if he's away it's just like I don't know it doesn't but you know why come naturally to either of us the reason is because we had to get good at that because long we distance. started long distance so he lived in Spain and I lived in Ireland and we would the longest we went without seeing each other I think is like a month or possibly like between one and two months but then it got to a point where we couldn't stand the whole it was so difficult like it just got really difficult so then I just ended up moving to Spain yeah <laughs> and then we like lived in a little box room and that was so great, but yeah. Um, yeah, like I kind of like having space apart sometimes though, because it makes you kind of appreciate them so much more. Like when they're, the, the whole absence makes the heart grow fonder thing, I really believe that. I think you, you can't be all up in each other's face like constantly, even if you live I don't together. Know. I've you don't experienced have to be. a bit of both. I, I, I experienced a bit of absence makes the heart grow fonder, and I also experienced out of sight, out of mind. Really? Yeah, yeah. I like have yeah. a balance between the two. So, like, I'll maybe like if I'm away like it, try and text Dan every day and probably won't get a chance to call every day it depends on like time difference of where we are yeah but like it won't even be like throughout the day I'll just be like hey how's it going yeah. and then like we'll wait to do like the big emotional catch-ups and stuff when we see each other again I don't yeah. know everyone is different a word that I learned recently that I really love that everyone needs to do with their friends family partners is meta communication What's that mean? so it's communicating about how you communicate so you oh we do that a lot yeah, yeah we yeah he he's the one who does that because i'm i'm kind of shit at i just have issues from childhood and stuff that has made hmm. um you know conflict resolution stuff like that kind of difficult for me um our styles are quite different so he always talks about our communication and what needs to change and mm. all that kind of stuff that's really really interesting that there's a word i need to read up about that meta communication you have that whole interview thing. <laughs> well, that's how we got together. When when Dan and I were like first dating, we like jokingly did this whole thing where we treated dating like a job Brilliant. application process. 
So the the position that was available was like long term partner, and it'd be like, so what will you bring to this role? What are your strengths and weaknesses? I love it. What are your expectations? What were your past roles like, and how did you? How, do, how, how did, did you do in them? Yeah, and like, why why did you leave your last job? <laughs> Were you fired? Yeah. Why? Were you fired? And why? Like, <laughs> like what, ha- what happened? And then like, um, I don't know. It was like a really funny way to talk about um, all of the important things, like what we wanted out of a relationship, whether or not we were compatible in mm. a relationship, but doing it through this metaphor that so we didn't feel like we were directly talking about it. Yeah, and so, yeah. But we could get all of that information across. That's and then amazing. since then, um, we've done this like yearly check-ins of like, right, so how do you think you've been performing in the role? Oh, Are you ready brilliant. for a promotion yet? <laughs> like, da 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 Like, um, I keep... You approach I, I, your relationship like you approach your life and your job, and I love it. Meticulous. <laughs> Sometimes, um, if I've got something that I need to communicate with Dan about, like, like if something is irritating me, like, me and Dan are very much, like, we just have to say it. We don't want, like, any resentment to, like, yeah. build and build and build, and then you snap. You just want to be like, hey, this is a thing that you're doing that is kind of frustrating me. Can we talk about that? Um, and, That's like, so if I bring something up to him... And then we talk about it, and then I will end it with like, "Do you have any feedback for me?" <laughs> Come on, lay it on. I'm me. just like, I we are, we're already like in this zone where we are politely conversing and like discussing things yeah. in like a very measured way. So like, I'm ready. Like, what I've, bothers I've, you? Yeah, I've given you my feedback, and I, and like, do you have anything for me too? I love that. I'm like, now is your opportunity. Speak now, forever hold your peace. It is better to have those conversations where it's not in an argument, I think. Yeah. Like, where, you know, you're um, repressing things, and then in an argument, you'll just throw something out there, and then they're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, yeah. When you bring stuff up, you kind of want to bring it up planned. Yeah. Like, I will be thinking in my head, like, I want to bring this up with Dan, and then I will... Um, like when like maybe at dinner or like something when we're both just like sat down and chilled I'd be like hey can I talk to you about something mm. rather than like waiting until maybe we're having a bickering moment and then bringing it up because yeah. then it comes from a place of emotion yeah. rather than a place of like hey like this is going to make us better my least favourite thing about being in a relationship like being in my current relationship is the Tell limits me, the limits of on my on my time like mm. I don't have nearly as much time to play with in terms of like other things like friends being a big one um because our jobs are quite like all over the place and it changes month to month and stuff so I always feel like I'm constantly mainly juggling like work and my relationship and then there's the other balls yeah. are smaller and I just, I feel, it makes me sad sometimes. Like, we went a long time without seeing each other because we're kind of getting established in our relationships and, like... Yeah, we haven't seen each other in ages, but we have a long-distance friendship, friendship as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then exactly. a long-distance friendship on top of you being in a long-distance relationship. Yeah. And then, like, this year... Oh, and then I was ill. So yeah, there was just, yeah. like, there was, there was just a lot of life so stuff. So many But things. every time you've come to London this year... I've been away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like, we kept missing each other. I know. Um, but it is, yeah. it's kind of, um, even even friends who live near me though, like I don't see them as much as I would if I was single. And I know like, I just think about when I was single and how frequently I would do stuff with friends and yeah. go away and all this kind of stuff. And But that's just what happens. Like your partner does essentially kind of become your best friend a lot of the time. Like I know it's not the case with every relationship, but he is definitely like my closest friend and Oh yeah. And I, I you know I always Thomas is also my closest friend. <laughs> <laughs> you just get on so well though. It yeah. makes me really happy when he gets on with my friends. Yeah. Um but yeah I just kind of wish there was more hours in the day basically. I don't want to spend less time with him at all, but I would like to spend more time with other people as well. Yeah. I try to compensate that because it is just a thing that happens but I try and um, solve that problem by organising big group things mm. so you're really good at that like the Harry Potter and I and like you're that doing was my thing after 60 but yeah yeah. I, yeah I try and just like be like right I'm organising a thing everybody let's go but yeah I'd love to know if you are in a relationship or you're single and how you feel about your current status um, I do think a big part of why we're both in very healthy relationships now is we weren't kind of constantly seeking one and we were open to one coming along mm. and then kind of comes together at the right time but I do 
like I don't know I, I'm, I'm really interested to know like how you're going about it if you're like re you really want a relationship and like you know how you're going about that and why you want a relationship so yeah feel free to leave your views and opinions and thoughts down in the comments so we'll both read them yeah we did a video on Hannah's <laughs> channel it was very fun a very different from this one do you want to tell them um we blind taste tested flavored lube fed to us by my boyfriend yeah he or fiance whatever put it on our tongues go watch it now Oh yeah, I Link think I kept referring to Thomas as your boyfriend. I don't know. Do you, yeah. <laughs> I don't like saying fiance. It's a weird that. word. You're a fella. Um, but yeah, thumbs up if you enjoyed and let me know if you miss collab videos like this. I've not done collabs. I did one collab a while back, but it used to be such an old school YouTube thing and mm. I kind of miss doing it. But um, yeah, I'll see you again in another video very soon. Go watch Hannah's video, go subscribe to her because she's amazing. And mwah. Bye! Hello.